What is going on, investors? Hopefully you guys are doing well out there. That's right. It is the start of earnings season, and we kick things off with the major banks, and I hope you guys are excited because I am excited too. On today's video, we're going to talk specifically about Wells Fargo Company, which reported earnings this morning, ticker symbol WFC. Now, what's interesting, when we look at the bank's earnings, we're not just getting a window into Wells Fargo, we get a window into the consumer, the commercial banking. We get a window into the consumer, home lending, car lending, credit cards, Okay, so whether or not you're directly interested in buying shares of Wells Fargo, well, you get a big window into the consumer in this one, and that might help you make other investment decisions. So the banks are always something that I study hard. And on today's video, I'm going to help you walk you through that process and help you feel like maybe you get something out of this, whether or not you're going to buy Wells Fargo shares or not. We'll talk about the price action in Wells Fargo. Look, we'll talk about treasury yields as well. Those have been ripping higher over the last year, just absolutely on fire. And when you take a look at Wells Fargo stock year to date, this thing's up 31. 1%. Just been a fantastic performer on the stock market year to date. Now, Wells Fargo made progress. We talked about this last time we did bank earnings. So Wells Fargo is a slightly different position than some of the other banks. They're kind of in a, you know cost-cutting mode. They're kind of restructuring their business to a certain degree, not necessarily formally, but they are doing some cost-cutting and moving some pieces around. And it appears that they're doing a pretty good job of it. We also saw that credit losses and charge off reached historic lows. When we jump over the numbers, we'll take a look at that as well. They also had some, you know, big gains on some write downs, student loan write downs, everything looking pretty good from the financial side. When we jump over to the numbers, we'll see that. Now, from a traditional valuation metric, the one that comes to mind whenever you're looking at a bank asset is priced to tangible books. So if you liquidated the bank's assets, you'd get a tangible book value value. And you see here, boy, Wells Fargo kind of bottomed out at, you know, right at around point, oh, point 0.8 point, you know, you're paying less than a dollar per book value on this one. Well, it surged up to 1.2 and that's comfortably where the stock was for a few years, actually a little higher than that at 1.4 to 1.6, even as high as 1.8. So investors are starting to get more comfortable with the book of business that Wells Fargo is throwing at you. Now, just some high level stuff. This is what I want you to take away from this, whether or not you buy Wells Fargo shares or you have them or, or whether or not you're interested in it, some interesting trends that we're seeing here. So here's consumer banking and lending. The average loan is actually down 8%. You might say, well, why is that important? Well, if rates are up like this, okay, rates have just been going sky high. This is the 10 year treasury. And that's basically kind of a measure of where interest rates are. Well, as they go up, if consumers continue to want to borrow at those rates, well, I'd say the probability of those rates continuing to go higher is probably pretty good. But what is happening is supply and demand it, it works across the entire economy, including interest rates. As interest rates go up, guess what? Consumers want to borrow less of that money because it's more expensive. And so we're actually seeing that consumers are rejecting these higher rates. And the more they do it, guess what will happen to these rates? You guessed it, they'll probably actually go down, even though most people are predicting inflation and rates continuing to go higher. We'll see what happens going forward. Average deposits are up. So we've got people depositing more because maybe you get a little bit higher rate and they're borrowing less. Commercial banking, are we seeing the same trend there? Absolutely. Average loan down 19% there. Average deposit up. Corporate and investing banking, average loan down, actually down 5% as well on that one. And then the wealth management, you see that total client assets are up 28%. And average loan up just slightly there, up about 4% there. The wealth management clients taking advantage still of the rates that you're seeing out there. So let's jump over to Wells Fargo specific. So we've got this net interest income. That's where they make a fair amount of their money, but they also got non-interest income as well. We see over the last year, this net interest income, despite the, the rising rates that we've seen over the last year, we're actually seeing that quarter over quarter, that is actually down. We were at 9.2 and we're down to about, we'll call that about 8.8. 
Now, from the non-interest income, that has just been phenomenal. You got investment banking and things like that has just been, you know, a money center for all these banks. This will be a theme as we go through all the bank's uh, revenues. We've got total revenues here just up marginally, okay, for quarter over quarter basis and a, a kind of a year over year basis on a quarterly basis, just basically flat here and in the environment we're in. Not necessarily that bad. Now, here's the other thing that we always want to take a look at when we're looking at these banks. Are these net charge off? This was a big discussion last year because you notice here changes in allowance for credit losses. March of 2020, you know what was going on in March of 2020, okay? We were kicking off things with the health situation and they allotted $3 billion, which is like, what, you know, one sixth of their total revenues. They added that to the charge-off allowances, okay? They added a record amount because they didn't know what was gonna happen in the coming weeks and year ahead. But what ended up happening is consumers ended up being fairly healthy. Okay, we saw a reduction of that in December when you have the parentheses around that. That actually means they took money out of the allowance for these credit losses. So they had the money set aside. And when you see the parentheses, it means, oh, I don't think that many people are going to charge off loans. So we'll take a little bit. So they took seven hundred and sixty three million. Well, in the most recent quarter, they took one point five billion dollars of that back. And so they're feeling really good over at Wells Fargo that people are not going to see these credit losses or default on loans. We see the charge off here and it's in a fairly uh, uh, you know tight range over the last quarter we went from 584 and we're actually down to 523 you see back in March and this was kind of at the start of things it wasn't like right when things kicked off but you're at 941 so you're even higher a year ago we're actually down 40 44 uh, percent over the last year that is good for the bank and also probably good for the economy as well now you've got some other costs and things like that and you come down here to Wells Fargo net income, just boom, up to 4.7 billion. We were at three in the previous period. And you see last year in March, you see why this stock has been performing well over the last year. Okay, they've really turned things around and these allowance for charge-offs really impacted earnings. I mean, it just basically tanked earnings into the $650 million range. Once they get back to a more normalized level, boy, they can really boost earnings. You see, we earned a dollar five per share on this one. So everything looking good. And then you can finally take a look at our balance sheet data. Here we have our loans and you see that's actually down quarter over quarter and down year over year. And so what is this telling me? Not a whole lot in a vacuum, but it is telling me as rates are going up, loans are coming down. And so consumers, businesses, all those types of things, they're somewhat rejecting these high rates. And so in the back of my mind, what I'm thinking is, well, rates could go down. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, we're going to have hyperinflation. Rates are going to, the Fed's going to have to raise rates, all this stuff from a macro sense. Well, you know, we're not really seeing evidence of it right here. We're actually seeing consumers reject these rates. Guess what happens when consumers reject these rates? Well, it's just like anything in supply and demand. If there's not enough supply, well, demand is going to go up. And in this case, demand is not there. So the supply is going to have to come down, which means rates are going to have to come down as well. We've got deposits. Those are basically flat up a little bit. And then we've got these assets basically flat or up a little bit. Now, last thing I wanted to show you is a little bit more like micro detail on the loan since we've talked so much about them. So we've got consumer lending here. We've got home lending. Home lending still appears to be really nice. Okay. And part of this could be just the fact that home prices in most parts of the country, not all, not necessarily the major metro areas, but certainly out in the suburbs has just been on absolute fire. And so it just could take more money to get a house these days. So home loans are doing well, but we see credit card loans, which consumers I think are very sensitive to interest rates when we're talking about credit cards because the interest rate obviously is so high. So you obviously want to pay that debt back first. Your home, you're not necessarily as you know anxious or you know trying to aggressively pay that off, although some people do that. We actually see credit cards are down year over year and on a quarterly basis as well. Auto loans essentially flat 
quarter over quarter. We know there's some supply issues with autos. And then we see personal lending is actually way down. Okay, so we see personal lending on a quarter over quarter basis down 10% and 18% year over year. Again, just something I wanted to show you. Put a little bit of nugget in your head about the kind of the macro vision that we get. This is why it's so important to take a look at these banks. Now, taking a look more specifically at the stock chart of Wells Fargo. So I have it zoomed out here almost. Uh, eh, this is, goes back into a little bit uh, December and November. November of last year, but I'm going to zoom this in a little bit tighter. Okay. And what I'm seeing here is we're kind of flattening out here. Okay. So we made a top here back in, uh, this is uh, March 18th, right in here. And the stock peaked here and got rejected. That was at $41, got rejected down to 38, came all the way back up to 41 a couple days ago. And it appears that this stock is getting rejected there as well. Now we could flatten out here. Eventually we can break up or we could potentially break down on this one. But in the shorter term, I would consider this somewhat of a trend and maybe kind of a, a sideways consolidation pattern. Here's the thing you're going to look for when you see this type of setup. You're looking for a break above 41. You get a break above 41. It's just like Bitcoin over the last couple of days or Dogecoin or a Google or a Facebook or some of these other stocks that have these similar formations that we've seen and they actually broke above that and created kind of new highs. That's what you'd look for with Wells Fargo. What could you know be the catalyst in that? In my opinion, probably higher rates because as you've seen, these as these rates have gone up, Wells Fargo stock has gone up as these rates have started stalling. Okay, we can see here over the last, we can kind of zoom this in. Over the last month or so, rates have kind of, hit, again, kind of hit a resistance level up here at 1.7%, okay? And they've come down a little bit. Well, what has happened to Wells Fargo stock? Well, it's hit a resistance and it's kind of come down. So this stock, in my opinion, kind of tied to rates. And when we looked at the loan data, it is not screaming to me that consumers out there love these high rates and don't mind paying them. Okay. They actually are kind of sensitive to them. And I think if rates went up even higher, you'd actually see home loans potentially come down. You'd see credit cards probably come down even more. And I think you definitely see personal lending come down. And I know with the supply chain with autos, you'd probably see that come down as well. So I wouldn't necessarily be in a hurry to jump in to Wells Fargo at these levels, although you could, there could be trade opportunities. A pull back to 38 will be, in my opinion, probably a pretty hard uh, support level, okay? You've got this moving average in green here that's coming up. That's almost right at 38. And then you've got these levels where we kind of bottomed out and kind of peaked here at 38. And so I think that could create, at least in the shorter term, a level of support under Wells Fargo. Now you break 38, you break this, you know, break this moving average. Boy, oh boy, this one can come down pretty quick. Now, your other alternative is the XLF, which we talked about on our Saturday show. This is the ETF that is all the financials kind of rolled into one. It's probably got a little bit of exposure to Wells Fargo and all these other banks. So if you don't want to pick winners or losers, it's too complicated for you, or it's just not something that you want to get into. Well, the XLF is a good alternative. We talked about on our Saturday show, this one's been in an uptrend and we had this kind of lower end. And if you break this lower end, well, I think you've definitely broken trend. Whether or not that is a permanent broke, we'll see what happens. But this one's in a nice little uptrend. Again, I think buoyed by the fact that we've got these higher rates. We'll look into the other banks. I'm very anxious to look into Bank of America and some of these other banks to see how these loan, how these how this loan growth is going, or in this case, loan retraction with Wells Fargo. So year to date, you've had great performance on this one. Having these stocks take a breather would be rational, in my opinion. It could create some opportunities to slowly inch into these stocks, especially if you have a portfolio that's tech heavy, that's healthcare heavy, that's uh, maybe a cryptocurrency heavy. Well, you could start inching into some of these other assets as they take a breather from the, the massive run that they've made over the last few months. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. More to come soon. Good luck with your investments.